I didn't know how to start, but we're starting. Hi, everybody. This is Jake, your resident content cowboy here. Yeehaw! And I thought it might be fun to talk about Microsoft's Xbox E3 press conference. Xbox and Bethesda, I should say, Z E3 press conference. And you know what? We're going to give them a grade because people love grades and they love to argue about grades. So by the end of this video, I will grade this press conference thank you all for watching and listening i am going to pull up the footage of the conference here so it's going to be no more of this old facey daisy i'll go through a lot of the things that were talked about not everything in crazy amounts of depths i'll give my opinions on what i think was what i think was i'll give my <clears throat> I'll give my opinions on what I think were great moments for Xbox, what were some not so good moments, and my overall thoughts of the conference. I'm curious if you watched it, and I'm sure you you did if you're watching this video, what would you grade the conference? Please leave that in the comments and feel free to fight with each other. I mean, that's kind of what this whole thing is, right? Okay, let's take a look at some of that footage. You had to assume that they were starting with a bang. I was curious if it was going to be Starfield right away. We all knew that they had to bring Starfield out at this conference. They just paid like $7 billion for Starfield. And sure enough, they start with Starfield. And I thought it was a great presentation for Starfield. If what they wanted to do was set up an exciting new world that looks gorgeous and get us salivating for what the possibilities of it could be, Bethesda getting back to the roots of what they do best, a single player role playing experience like this, then call me George Bush because mission accomplished. And then, of course, this was something debated for a while back and forth around the purchase of Bethesda. But there was the question as to whether or not Starfield and, of course, games like Elder Scrolls VI, which we still don't know, but games like Starfield would or would not be exclusives. I thought it was pretty clear that they paid a lot of money so that they could have these games exclusive, at least console-wise. And this trailer is punctuated with that flag that is planted. Bethesda is exclusive. Get ready. Oh, and a launch date. And akin to a stinger at the end of a horror movie trailer, every game almost is hit with that. Play it day one on Xbox Game Pass. And that is the entire theme of this conference. It's really not an Xbox conference. It's really not a Bethesda conference. It is a Game Pass E3 conference. They're playing a different game. They're playing 3D chess. While other people are playing 4D chess. You get it. I flipped it. Then we have this footage from Stalker 2, a console launch exclusive. So, you know, it's on PC, but they're basically saying, you don't get it, Nintendo and PlayStation. By the way, no one looks at the footage of this game and goes, I, I think that'll run on my Switch. I'm not a fan of Stalker. And while I think this footage looks cool, it doesn't do a ton for me. I think they have some really awesome looking shots later in it. And for someone invested in this world i bet this was a really cool preview but yeah if i'm just being real this isn't my thing i'm sure some people thought this was very very cool i'm not trying to knock it if you love it i'm just giving you my take i will say though for someone who's not familiar with the series or really a fan of it some of this footage is absolutely beautiful i mean this is such a cool shot it's so awesome and then of course we've got the release date and Play it day one with Game Pass. That is everything at this conference, basically. Not literally everything, because they show things like Far Cry 6, but man, so much Game Pass. And now we're looking at it. My, I, This is like the game for me. This is the game I'm most excited for this year. And of course, it's day one Game Pass. This is Back for Blood. I love Left 4 Dead so much. I think it's such a good game. I can't wait for this. It just, ah, oh, it brings me back. I've got such great memories of playing Left 4 Dead and Left 4 Dead 2 with the boys. So I can't wait to get back into this game. 
And them getting a game like this on Game Pass, it also means there's just going to be so many people down to play it. It will be easy to find matches. It could have a great community around it. Oh, yes. Yes, Back for Blood. And yes, Game Pass. That's that's. I know people used to say yes, King, and yes, Queen. How about yes, Game Pass? <laughs> no, I know. We're not going to start that. Then a console exclusive launch for a new game from Avalanche Studios. You might know them as the makers of Rage 2 or a game that I really love, the open world Mad Max game. This is going to be a co-op open world game. We really don't learn anything about it in this trailer that's, I don't know, I guess of any value. I mean, <laughs> they don't show any gameplay is a better way of putting it. So could be really cool. And it is exclusive. This game is called Contraband. And yes, another day one Game Pass game. I think it's pretty clear that Microsoft realizes that they can't make The Last of Us 2 and God of War, at least not right now. But what they can do is have a library of games on Game Pass that is unbeatable for the value. When I was younger, there's no question that I would have had one console because that's where I would have been financially at the time. And without question right now, it would be an Xbox and I would have Game Pass for sure. Then we have a free update to Sea of Thieves that brings Captain Jack Sparrow into the game. Uh, I don't play Sea of Thieves. This seems cool and it's a free update. I bet people who play this are pretty stoked, but I won't spend time talking about it because I really don't have any connection to it. Moving on to something I'm very excited for. Yakuza Like a Dragon on Game Pass. Yes, Game Pass. I recognize that's not going to catch on. That's the last time I'll do that. Or maybe I'll do it again. Maybe I'll, I'll break with tradition. I'll keep doing it until it's a thing. Stop, Jake. You won't make Yas Game Pass a thing. But man, I've really wanted to play this game. I haven't found the time to do it yet. And I was always hoping that it would wind up on Game Pass or as a PlayStation Plus game. So here we are, Yakuza Like a Dragon. <laughs> Let's do it. I'm really excited. I've got it downloaded and I'm going to play it tonight. We then get a game that is not on Game Pass, Battlefield 2042, and it looks dope. I haven't liked the most recent Battlefield games. I was a really huge Battlefield Bad Company 2 fan, and I feel like they've kind of gotten away from the things that I love most in a Battlefield game, but I'm not going to lie. This looks really sick, and it looks like it delivers those amazing, unique Battlefield moments. Just, <laughs> I mean, this tornado that's coming in in the middle of this battle is awesome. Now onto this next game that I think is just going to be such a cool experience. 12 Minutes is this time loop of a game with James McAvoy and Daisy Ridley starring, and of course, Willem Dafoe. I am so excited to see what this is going to be like. This feels like an awesome game to sit down and play with someone. I will definitely pick this up and play it with my wife, where we will try to figure out what's going on inside of this time loop. I think this is just one of those games that's also so perfect for Game Pass because... I can understand someone having issues with the value of a game like this. The value of shorter, smaller experiences like this are always talked about. But when it's a Game Pass game, it's pretty perfect. We then have Psychonauts 2, which is a cult classic game that I didn't ever play. Never played Psychonauts, so I'm sure there are people who are freaking out about this and they love it. It's just not my thing. But day one with Game Pass. They then move into some Bethesda talk about games I don't have a lot of interest in either. I mean, I'm sorry to I'm sorry to be so freaking honest with you, but I don't care about Fallout 76 or Elder Scrolls Online. If you do, God bless you. They're just not for me. Moving on. After a little bit of uh, whatever this is, party animals could be really fun. I know lots of different kinds of gamers. Whatever. We get Hades. Hades is one of the best games, if not the best game of last year. It's an amazing roguelike game. If you haven't played it, and this is your chance to play it on Xbox, I mean, get ready, because it's so good. It's so, so good. They always make great games. This is, without question, for me, their best game. It's amazing. We then get a weird little game, Somerville, which I don't know. I don't know what to make of it. Could be pretty cool. 
I really like the look of it, and I think some of what they've done with the lighting is really cool. And it's perfect that it's a Game Pass game because this feels like a game that if I'm told is amazing, I will probably check out. But if I'm just told that it's pretty good, I might not fork out the cash for it. However, it being on Game Pass, maybe it's something I'll pick up. And of course, Halo. We knew there would be Halo. We knew that they had delayed Halo, which in hindsight is now one of the greatest decisions a game company has ever made. After Cyberpunk did, well, what they did, a game company delaying their game because it's just not ready seems like a brilliant, brilliant move. And I gotta say, the footage they put together for this Halo looked great. I'm a huge Halo fan, but I haven't been into the franchise in years. I think the last one I played in earnest was Halo Reach. So it's been a while. It would be fun to jump back into this game. I don't know if I could be a full-on Halo multiplayer guy again. There's a time and place for it, but it's also free on Game Pass. So yeah. Oh, and the multiplayer is free to play in general. So yeah, this game is gonna be huge. And then everyone's favorite Diablo, Diablo 2. I'll be honest, it's not my favorite Diablo. My favorite Diablo is actually Diablo 3, followed by Diablo 1, then Diablo 2. Sorry, but I'm sure everyone else is most excited for Diablo 2. I just really loved 3 and 1. <laughs> but this looks good. It looks really good, and it's got a date. After that, we have a cool trailer for A Plague Tale Requiem, which, you know, it's a trailer. It's hard to know what to make of a trailer. And then we get some Far Cry 6 footage. But first, it is interesting to note that A Plague Tale Requiem is day one Game Pass. What a theme, Xbox. And the footage here looks really killer. Pardon the pun, because people are being killed. But it is a far cry from Halo, pardon the pun. I don't know, it actually looks great. It's not really a far cry from anything. It just looks like a really great game. Obviously not an Xbox console exclusive, not on Game Pass, but an awesome looking game. This is one of the few games that they show during the conference just to be like, hey, we've got all the big titles too that aren't exclusive. I'm gonna skip over a few games like Slime Rancher 2, sorry Slime Rancher. This game with these snowboarders, sorry. Atomic Heart. Yeah, I mean, these games, I'm not saying they don't look cool, but you get it. Replaced looks very cool, and it seemed like it was getting a lot of good buzz. New content for Grounded, Among Us, EU Din Chronicles. This game I actually think looks great. The Ascent, I can't wait to play The Ascent. This looks awesome. Age of Empires 4 being on Game Pass, look. I don't know if I'll ever play Age of Empires 4, but I have so many fond memories of Age of Empires, so it's just nice to see. And then this, for me, is a big announcement. The Outer Worlds 2, exclusive to Xbox and on Game Pass day one. I mean, we kind of knew, right? But we weren't sure. And now, we're sure, baby. Sorry for calling you baby there. I know we're not there yet in our relationship and it's really not a term I use often, but I did. We then get two absolutely stunning games back to back, Microsoft Flight Sim and of course Forza. You knew there'd be a Forza, but wow, this new Forza looks good. And some of the stuff they're doing with the online functions in it, this might be the first Forza I really put some time into. And then the reveal of the new Arcane Studios Bethesda game, which looks cool even though we only get a cinematic trailer for Redfall, which of course will be on Game Pass day one and is an Xbox exclusive. It really feels like they came out swinging with some of this. So it's time to give them a grade. Grade them, grade them, grade them. You hear that? Well, it's just me saying grade them, but you hear it. I think it goes without saying that Microsoft has a monumental task in front of them with trying to claw their way back into people's hearts after all of the mistakes they made with the Xbox One. Everything they're doing with the Xbox Series S and X and more importantly, Game Pass feels like the perfect direction for them. 
This was a fantastic conference, I think. I've seen a lot of people say it's one of the best conferences they've ever seen. I've also seen a lot of people argue that it wasn't good at all. You get how people are. I feel like I'm fortunate because I'm able to own both consoles. So just because I see an amazing Xbox conference doesn't mean I'm still not very excited that I get to play all the PlayStation exclusives that are coming. If I'm being honest, I'm more excited about the PlayStation exclusives, but I'm blown away with what they are doing with Game Pass. And Starfield feels like it could be another Skyrim type game if they nail it. Who knows if they will? But if Bethesda can come back and make the kind of game that they know how to make, oh man, that could be huge. I am going to rate this conference. The only thing I think they could have done better in my eyes was have maybe a big, huge surprise that no one saw coming. There are a few things in here I really didn't see coming, but I guess if they announced Elder Scrolls 6 was exclusive or they'd created some partnership with Square or bought Sega or something like that, that could have put it over the top. But otherwise, I don't know what else you could want. I thought it was pretty freaking great. So I am giving this conference an A. Minus? No, I'm just giving it an A. Not an A+, plus, but I think it is a solid, solid conference. One of my favorites. Again, let me know what you think in the comments. Am I being too nice? I mean, there's enough stuff that I don't love, but there's enough stuff that I'm really, really excited for. And I think what they're doing with Game Pass here is huge. It's going to be a freaking revolution. There's a possibility people are going to start saying, yes, Game Pass. All right. Thank you all for watching. Thank you for listening. And I will see you all next time. Mwah.